What makes a side quest work? Good side quests can be worthwhile pieces of content by themselves, but great ones need to add to a game's narrative, world, or fit within its larger gameplay context. For example, in The Witcher 3, it makes sense that Geralt takes menial contracts from villagers because he's a monster slayer and sword for hire. These people provide his livelihood. I feel for you, but this is my job, so let's talk about my pay. Furthermore, in Nier, it makes sense for Father Nier to be doing random tasks for the townspeople because he needs to make money for his sick daughter by any means necessary. Do you often get asked to handle such inane shopping trips? I don't think these trips are inane. I'm a father in a dying world. I'll take whatever job I can get. On the other hand, it doesn't make sense for Aloy in Horizon Zero Dawn to be performing favors for the people in her town who previously alienated her. She's an outcast to be shunned. I'll do what I can to help. Wouldn't she be at least a little bitter towards these people? Why are they even asking for her help in the first place? It also wouldn't be fitting for a game like Uncharted to include a side plot about Nate Drake doing his taxes it wouldn't fit within Uncharted's otherwise frantic and adventurous tone. There are a number of ways that side quests can work well within a game's pre-established structure. For example, they can 1. Help establish the tone of the game 2. Expand upon ideas introduced but not elaborated upon by the main quest line and 3. They can give the player tester versions of more difficult challenges ahead. In this video, we'll be looking at side quests in Nier as examples of side quests done right. We'll be examining three quests that set up the game's overall tone, criticize the use of side quests in other games, and finally, one that has the player act out the moral themes of the game in preparation for more difficult decisions further ahead. While a lot of Nier's plot can be confusing and a bit esoteric, God damn. Fuck. There are a few side quests that serve as cross sections of the game's philosophy and general tone. For example, the very early quest, A Dog Astray. Other quests that I'll get more into later deal with more complicated moral questions than this one, but what A Dog Astray lacks in complexity, it makes up for in clarity and emotional resonance. It provides the player with a taste of the larger emotional palette that the rest of the game plays with. What? In A Dog Astray, an old man in the village hires you to find his lost dog. While exploring the northern plains, you find the dog's body surrounded by shades. Upon inspection, you find some herbs in the dog's mouth. You return to the village to deliver the old man the bad news, but you only find his grandson, who tells you that the old man is dead. The herbs that the dog was trying to fetch were ingredients for his master's heart medication. The combined stress of his heart condition and his lost dog killed him. The man and the dog both died tragic deaths. They both suffered because of their connection with the other and even contributed to each other's deaths. However, there's something beautiful within this tragedy. The bond between the man and the dog was so strong that they couldn't live without each other. The dog loved the man so much that he risked and lost his life for his master's well-being, and the old man cared for the dog so much that his worry killed him. Even though the dog failed and the man died because of it, the dog died in service of their relationship, something that they both thought was beautiful and worth keeping alive. Despite their suffering, the old man and the dog both lived to care for each other and to preserve their friendship. The plot of A Dog Astray ends in tragedy, but the thorough lines that give the quest meaning are friendship and selflessness. At the end of the quest, the man's grandson asks Father Near, You think Max and Grandad are together in heaven? He responds, I do. I'm sure of it. There's no proof that the man and the dog are in heaven, and this statement doesn't reflect a view that Father Nier repeats anywhere else in the game. It's blind hope. In the face of misery and pointlessness, these two men hold on to the hope that these events will have ultimate meaning. 
While this quest appears insignificant, the quest concisely conveys the tone of the rest of the game. The world seems to be on the precipice of collapsing, yet there are still pockets of hope to find. Father Nier's response to the grandson's comment about heaven also reflects his blind hope in curing his daughter Yona's terminal condition. Yona? Yona, no! Despite having no cure for Yona or any proof that collecting the sealed verses will actually do anything for her, he trucks on because it's the only hope he has. Give my daughter back! Much of what makes Nier's quests interesting lies in the subtext of the quests, not in their plots. The most infamous quest in Nier is the Fisherman's Gambit, a nine-part fetch quest that has you collecting fish for an old man in Seafront. Each time you complete one of the man's quests and bring him a new fish, he rewards you by teaching you training exercises that he claims will make you a master fisher. The process itself consists of a minigame that makes the player tilt the control stick in the opposite direction that the fish is tugging. Catching a fish becomes a war of attrition that's without skill, is devoid of any fun, and leads to little reward. The fish can only be used for the fisherman's gambit or can be sold for money. They certainly don't net you anything valuable or interesting other than deep contempt for whoever put this mechanic in the game. However, Nier uses this otherwise pointless mechanic to build something meaningful. Once you've caught the last fish for the old man, you return to Seafront and the old man is missing. Another man in the area tells you that he died. Oh, the old fisherman? Didn't you hear? He passed away just this morning. I guess that old war injury finally got the best of him. From what I understood, the guy used to be quite the mercenary. He supposedly did all kinds of terrible things back in his day. So truth be told, no one in town much cared for him, but he sure seemed to enjoy your company. I think you made his last days some happy ones. This is strange, but I feel like he's still here somehow, looking at me. I trust that he is in heaven by now, settling down for a run by the pond. I hope you're right, Vice. With a few lines of dialogue, Nier transforms what was once a monotonous and pointless task into a meaningful interaction with an old man looking for human connection. Nier asks the player to rethink their perception of a fisherman's gambit. Instead of remembering the nine fishing tasks as boring and pointless filler, it asks you to remember those tasks as an old man's last connection to humanity. This quest criticizes other games that dole out meaningless fetch quests in attempts to pad out game length, games like Dragon Age Inquisition and Skyrim. While these quests aren't always bad, most of them are just pointless and don't contribute anything to the game experience other than monetary and experiential reward. By imbuing the most conventionally meaningless brand of quest with genuine humanity and purpose, Nier demonstrates that even the most boring game mechanics can be made meaningful if given the right context. While a dog astray and the fisherman's gambit are certainly interesting, the lighthouse lady's wrath and closure are two of the best side quests in the game and best demonstrate Nier's potential. And just for clarity, from here on out I'll be referring to both of these quests as just the lighthouse lady's wrath since they're pretty much just two parts of one quest anyway. In The Lighthouse Lady's Wrath, the old woman who runs the lighthouse in Seafront wants to travel across the ocean to visit her husband. They haven't seen each other in 50 years and have only communicated by letter. Cursed with the black scrawl and incurable and terminal disease, she just wants to see her husband one last time before she inevitably dies, but the postmaster won't let her leave because she's the only one who can operate the lighthouse. The woman contracts you to convince the postmaster to let her leave. When you confront the postman with the woman's request, he reveals that he won't let her leave because her husband has been dead for 50 years, and the letters she has been receiving were all actually written by the postmaster and the rest of the townspeople. So you're all in on it. 
Those letters kept her going. They gave her hope. She believed her love to be alive in a foreign land somewhere, and we couldn't bear to tell her otherwise. So we just kept the lie going. It started with my father some 50 years ago. No, not her. Will you continue your lie now? Yes. The truth can only cause her pain. You sure about that? It's not a very happy truth now, is it? And what of her final request? I don't know. How should I know? I'm just a damn postman. I don't know what to do anymore. What's the best thing to do? What's the right thing? Unable to bear the load of this moral dilemma, he forces the lighthouse lady's problem onto the player and player character's shoulders. Should you tell her the truth of her husband's demise, or continue to lie to her and tell her that her husband is still alive? While many other games like Mass Effect or Infamous have moral decision-making mechanics that allow players to choose good or bad story options, Nier gives the player two painful and ambiguous choices to wrestle with. Do you continue a 50-year-old lie to a dying woman and save her the pain of reality? Or do you tell her the truth and risk ruining the rest of her already painful life? Instead of praising or chastising the player for whatever decision they make, the game presents more uncertainty. We see Father Nier wrestling with his choice, and Grimoire Vice urging him to accept the difficulty of life and the need to move on despite that difficulty. It makes you wonder what the point of everything is. Life is hard. It seems the right thing is rarely the happy thing. Ah, it's only as complicated as you choose to make it. Was the old woman happy? Unhappy? Who can say? One can never know for true. You simply make your best attempt and move on. I guess. Not only is this an interesting moral exercise on its own, but this difficult decision prepares the player for even more difficult decisions ahead. Without getting too much into spoilers, the Lighthouse Lady's Wrath prepares Father Nier and the player for their ultimate face-off with the Shadow Lord. It prompts the player to question morals and to face the uncertainty of life. Vice's insistence on moving ahead, despite uncertainty and pain, is one of Nier's major themes, one that continues to develop throughout the main quest line and in a number of other side quests. I'm not trying to argue that all side quests need to be structured like Nier's. Not everything has to be sad and difficult. However, side quests shouldn't just be filler content that can be cut and pasted into any other game. In a time when every other game is open world or bloated with 100 plus hours of content, more is not necessarily better. Side quests have to fit within the tone and scope of their particular game. If not, that game will start to feel confusing and non-committal, like it's trying to be something it's not. Games like Horizon Zero Dawn are fun for a while, but its constantly shifting tone and the disconnected manner of the side quests ultimately left me feeling bored and I quickly forgot about Horizon once I was done with it. However, when I remember Nier, I quickly remember the Lighthouse Lady or even the Old Fisherman. Its best side quests complemented the game's focus on moral ambiguity and aided my understanding of the game as a whole. Even though I wasn't aware of it, Nier was telling me how to play it from the very early hours, as any good game, and any good side content, should. <laughs>